everyone welcome back so this is part two of our introduction to natural health products in Canada and the the topic we're going to dig into today is understanding what resources Health Canada has provided so that if you are a product developer who's been tasked with developing a natural health product you can understand what sort of pre-cleared information has been provided by Health Canada so that you can um, move on uh, your product development faster and more effectively. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to identify some of the resources prepared by Health Canada for supporting natural health products claims, including the single ingredient monographs and product monographs. And we'll research information related to NHPs on Health Canada's website. And for those of you who are watching through the YouTube channel, I will um, create some links to the sites that I'm working from. And I always recommend on anything that we're working on from a regulatory basis to always go back to Health Canada or the Canadian Food Inspection Agency's resource pages to make sure that you have the most up-to-date information possible. So I always tease that we are friends and I'm going to jump straight out to our web page here rather than editing it out seamlessly. I've gone to Health Canada's uh, section on natural health products and is, this is under the um, the Natural Health and Non-Prescription Drugs Directorate, and it used to be the the NHP Directorate, but they have included non-prescription drugs now um, into this category. But there's a lot of there's a lot of information that's here, and I highly recommend that you go and take a look at at this. Some of this you may have recognized from our previous slideshow, but uh, there's information that's targeted towards consumers. Um, there is also a lot of information specifically for industry. And one one feature is uh, if you are going to be registering a natural health product, you can do your licensing now online and it has streamlines the process. But uh, uh, the third part of this video, I do want to walk you through some of the information that's necessary from a product licensing perspective. And if you are being involved in some of the clinical trials, this is above and beyond the scope of the course that I'm delivering. Um, but there are uh, pieces of information there in terms of any clinical trial uh, data and clinical trial management uh, for being able to prove the efficacy of novel health products. But what I really want to jump into is these monographs, because honestly, this is this is really quite quite interesting. Um, the na the licensed natural health products database, you can go through and verify that products that you are seeing on the shelf are indeed licensed natural health products. And there have been incidences where food companies have used fraudulent labeling and made a claim that their product was a natural health product and it has not been. And that product then had to be recalled. Um, but the monographs, I think, is where there's a lot of fun. And if we click through on the monographs, um, Health Canada has, uh, has over the years collected um, a wide variety of literature reviewing the safety and efficacy of a variety of different ingredients, and they've compiled that into what they call their compendium of monographs. And these monographs, uh, there's there's um, there's there's two elements to this. There's the single ingredient and product monographs, and so that branches off into sort of two subgroups, where single ingredients you can look up. Uh, let's say I want to make something with. Panex ginseng, I can look up that single ingredient and find the dosing information. Or maybe I want to make something with turmeric. Uh, I can look up the dosing and relevant information there. Product monographs are where you're looking at categories of products or categories of um, symptoms and diseases that you might be wanting to manage. Down here, you have what's called the Natural Health Products Ingredients Database. And this is a little bit confusing because you may be saying, well, wait a second, is it... Uh, a medicinal ingredient? No, this is actually where it's going to be providing your acceptable non-medicinal ingredients. I mentioned in the previous video that they're referring back to Division 16 of the Food and Drugs Regulation, but uh, they do have a separate uh, ingredients database, and I do want to make sure that you are referring to that. There is guidance uh, information as well. So let's jump out and take a look at some of these monographs. So in here, this is what is called pre-cleared information. And 
if we scroll down, we can, right now we're in all. I'm gonna jump into the tab here that says single ingredient monographs. Let's uh, make this a bit bigger for, I always tease the people at the back of the room. <laughs> we're gonna know you're on a screen. Let's just jump to the single ingredient monograph. So now we're just looking at different, different, uh, most of them are plants, but some of them are enzymes. Some of them are going to be from animal sources, but, um, Gee whiz, what, what can we do with aloe? Let's just open up the file and see what can we do with aloe, just, just for fun. So I'm not going to read all of this for you. You can go into these monographs yourself and explore and have some fun. But aloe vera, as you know, I'm sure it is, it's, it's a pretty common product and it can be used in food products. It's, so your route of administration is oral. Your dosage is... is um, it, it's excluding foods or food-like dosage forms, and it can be, uh, here we go, we can start to see the uses and purposes. So uses or purposes, traditionally used in herbal medicine as a stimulant laxative, traditionally used in herbal medicine for the short-term relief of occasional constipation, or used in herbal medicine to promote bowel movements. Oh, well, that was fun. <laughs> um, so... Uh, <laughs> Honestly, it, it does it does remind us a little bit about the nutrient content or structure function claims that we saw in the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry, where they give a very clear wording about what you can state. And note down here, if you have those traditional use, so traditional use or herbal medicine use, you have to write the words herbal medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, or Ayurveda into that definition. And so you can use it from... Uh, a couple different subpopulations, you can use it in adolescents, 12 to 17 years old, or in adults 18 years and older. And in the quantities, you can have it in a dry powder, non-standardized extract, extract, tincture, fluid extract, decoction, or infusion of an equivalent of 50 to 300 milligrams of dried leaf latex per day. So now, if we were making a product, we would know that this is the quantity of aloe vera that we'd want to be having in a dose of product, and so depending on how we are preparing it, so is it a, is it in a dry form? Is it in a powder to make into a uh, just add water and stir sort of uh, mixture? Or are we having some sort of tincture or extract? We do want to make sure that we have these additional directions for use, allowing 6 to 12 hours for laxative effect. Take a single dose at bedtime or a few hours before or taking other medications and so on. Um, and so now, and now we've got the risk information as well. So these are risk statements that you should be having on your on your package. And then there are additional contraindications that you should be making sure are on your label. So those contraindications, so making sure that you aren't taking it if you've got Crohn's disease or undiagnosed rectal bleeding or so on. Um, this is again all of uh, all of this information is informative for you as you are developing your product as well as when you are developing the label copy for your product and you can use this information it provided your product is a low risk product and is being used for a minimally uh, limiting disease so constipation would be one of those minimally limiting diseases that's reasonably low risk and as such it's, it's going to be one of those uh, pieces of pre-cleared information that is relevant to a, a wide variety of products. Let's jump back here. I'm watching the time. I want to make sure that I don't run too, too long here. But we've, we've got all sorts of different products. So we want to have caraway or maybe you want carrot. What, what can you do with carrots? Let's go a little bit faster this time. But um, if it's carrot root, dried carrot roots, you can give it in... Uh, Emulsion or suspension or solution or liquid preparations for children one to two years. You can have chewables, emulsion, suspension, powders, solutions, or liquid preparations for children three to five, or children six to 11, 12 to 17, and adults 18 or older. It's going to be in the guidance document. So you can use it as a source of vitamin A for the maintenance of good health, or as a source of vitamin A, or specifically to prevent vitamin A or pre source of vitamin A to help in the development and maintenance of bones. You can go about and use these sorts of claims. Um, I'm not going to read them all for you, but 
you can make those claims and then you here's your dosing information so you do need to you do need to adjust it to the beta carotene content beta carotene as you know is the carotenoid in carrots that contributes the vitamin a activity and here is your minimum and maximum uh, dosing uh, capabilities on that product and so the amount of carrot that you would put in your product would be relative to the amount of beta carotene that you are going to be delivering as your active component so there's going to be all those other risk statements and, and so on. I'm going to jump back out here, but let's just take a look at some of the other information that's in these. So if we want to do product monographs, let's jump in here and, oh, what can we do here? So now we're, uh, when we're in the product monographs, we're now grouping things by what can you do to treat? So for example, maybe I have acne therapy. I just had my teenage kid come in and say, how do you manage pimples? Well, let's see if there's, oh, are there any? Oh, you know what? These are all more medicinal type ingredients. Um, but uh, that same NHP based approach you have to follow. What else can we find here? Some of them are very focused on homeopathy and flower essences, for example, is Bach therapy. Um, what can we find here? We just did any or we just did a laxative product. What can we find? I was looking for hey workout supplements. Let's, let's take a look what what we can do from a workout supplement perspective. So again, a workout supplement very low risk from a health perspective, and it's it's going to be focusing on things like uh, improving health recovery in a post workout status. So. We've got some protein sources, uh, alfalfa protein concentrate, so more protein, 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 protein. Now we've got essential amino acids. And what you'd have to do is cross-reference back to find out what's the dosing information on each of these different ingredients. But this is subgrouping them for you so that if you have a certain type of product or a certain type of claim, that you want to be able to make, you can find it. So ergogenic, so being able to um, make you feel energetic. Panax ginseng is going to be an ergogenic product and you'd be able to make some form of ergogenic claim against that. Let's jump back just to see what we can claim for uh, Panax ginseng in the, in the ingredient monographs. So Panax ginseng, let's jump back out here. Oh, come on. It must be under ginseng. Ginseng Panax. So what can we claim on this? So Panax ginseng, the dosage form is oral, root of administration. So we can use it in herbal medicine as a supportive therapy for the promotion of healthy glucose levels, support cognitive function or reduce mental fatigue, help support cognition, used in herbal medicine to enhance physical capacity and performance in the case of physical stress. There we go. There's our ergogenic claim to be able to enhance physical capacity and performance. Or used in herbal medicine as an adaptogen to increase energy and resistance to stress. Or used in traditional medicine, uh, traditional Chinese medicine to reinforce qi and benefit the spleen and lung and re leave symptoms of thirst due to impairment of body foods and internal heat. And so again, we've got all that dosing information following down. So here's your, your different methods of preparation. And here's your contraindications and risk statements that you need to make alongside Re uh, adverse reaction statements that you would want to be including in your labeling. And so you can, uh, I want to encourage you at this point to just jump into these websites and explore and just have some fun uh, figuring out what sorts of health claims you can make against the different types of ingredients that you may be including in a natural health product because it's it's, it's kind of curious and fun and uh, almost uh, sometimes uh, hilarious to read uh, what some of these uh, possible claims are and, and to brainstorm in your mind the the applications that you could invent with these products and what sorts of uh, intuitive or counterintuitive products you might come up with. Main thing is all of this information is available to you um, online and I'll include the 
links to some of these high-level websites so that you can start your exploration of the different natural health products ingredients yourself and inform yourself on how you can use them better. All right, you know where to find me if you have questions. Take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.